Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. CNBC TV 18 and Pure Storage present The Data Point. Accelerate businesses with AI and cloud. Over the last two years, we have seen a massive uptick in data gathering leading to growth in the data center sector globally and in India. With the Indian government's push to digitization, policy backing and the country's rich network connectivity, cost advantage, skill labor availability and low climate risk, India is uniquely positioned to become the regional data center hub in Asia. Hello and welcome to CNBC TV 18 and Pure Storage present The Data Point. Accelerate businesses with AI and cloud. I am your host, Debangana Ghosh, and we are in this special conversation with James Petter, Vice President and General Manager, International Pure Storage. In the next 30 minutes, we will discuss the global data center market, opportunities in storage solutions and innovations, and whether India has the scope to become the world's data center. Thanks for joining us. I would like to begin uh, with addressing the kind of growth we have seen in the uh, data center market. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, as of 2021, the data center sector has uh, reached a global market size of over $220 billion. And right now it is uh, growing at a CAGR of about 5.1% and is likely to touch over $343 billion by 2030. So I wanted to understand how do you see the data center data center sector capitalize uh, on this upcoming demand and the opportunity going forward all right well, well firstly thank you very much for having me here um, I mean clearly data is growing at an exponential rate um, and I'm sure you've seen a lot of the stats that you know 90 percent of the data uh, produced uh, has been produced by the world in the last two years but some of the interesting factors are that um, the majority of that data is unstructured so, you know, and that, that data growth is growing at like 30% per year. So if you roll that forward to, you know, five years time, like 20, 2027, four years time, that means that that unstructured data element will quadruple. So that's an enormous amount of data. Um, and obviously here in India, you know, that's an incredible opportunity. And it's actually estimated that in India, there'll be an incremental $8 billion uh, spent on, on this type of issue or this opportunity by 2026. So it's an enormous opportunity. And certainly we see that, you know, and, and look, the majority of that is actually driven by artificial intelligence, analytics, machine learning, all of which is based around the digitization that's taking place here. But India fundamentally is, you know, one of the fastest, if not the fastest growing, you know, data producer in the world. It's actually double the rate of the rest of the globe. So India's growing at like 5%, the rest of the world is growing at 2.5%. So an enormous opportunity, lots of data, um, and a really exciting time. Like you just mentioned, we are also seeing a lot of demand increase in the APAC region itself. And we have seen multi-million dollar investments coming in within India to uh, set up data centers and by global big tech firms like AWS, Azure, and Google. And probably India is eyeing at a trillion dollar opportunity within this sector. Yeah. So do you think India has the opportunity to become the world's data center? So I think India is at the cusp of becoming, you know, the default data center for the APJ region. Um, and there are good reasons for that. I mean, you look at the, the population. So, the, you know, I think I saw a stat that 70% of the Indian population is below 29. You know, the level of uh, the amount of data and data consumption through mobile data is actually the equivalent of the US and China put together. So it's absolutely enormous. Um, but what we're, what we're really seeing uh, in terms of, you know, the actual data growth is that that data growth is being driven by connectivity. So the, you know, pretty much, you know, the large population in India has a mobile. That's going to drive connectivity and that's going to drive access to data, which will then drive the requirement for, you know, 5G and ultimately, you know, more um, equipment and you know technology in data center footprints. So, uh, and the estimate is that there'll be an incremental 45 data centers in India by 2025. So, you know this is a huge you know problem. 
but it's also an enormous opportunity in this region to really accommodate that and you know, you know, grasp that growth that is out there. But coming to the problem area of the matter, so like you mentioned, so energy, energy costs are going up especially given that uh, there is a war going on in Russia, the Russia-Ukraine war, plus the global uh, inflation that we are seeing right now. So how well equipped is the sector and even company like Pure Storage to cope up with such problems? So I would say that, you know, it's not just the en energy consumption, it's also the, the green agenda and sustainability that is, you know, a, a large majority of conversations that we're having. Um, but to the point around energy, um, obviously with energy costs going up um, and you know, the ability for some companies to be able to pay for that, that's become a real you know, CEO, CXO agenda. Um, but when we're talking to customers, you know, there are two real key elements that we talk to them about. The first one is operational efficiency. And the second one is how they can you know, buy and use really simple technology to manage this huge data growth. So let me just talk about those briefly. So operational effectiveness, you know, companies need to be able to design technology that, you know, use less power, are more cost effective when using power. And we use the term watts per terabyte. And then what that means is basically the amount of data you have combined with the amount of energy usage that you have. And it's certainly at Pure, what we do is we are actually laser focused on trying to reduce that power consumption across all of our technologies. The second point around simplicity is really about how you can, you know, with this enormous data growth, how can you manage that in a far smaller footprint using less power, less cooling? And we have certain technologies that basically crush the data. Um, you know, let's say, you, you know, six years ago, there's something called a term called a petabyte. It's a, it's a volume of data. Um, but that petabyte would have filled six racks of storage. Nowadays, that is 3U. So you can really see how, you know, you can't just keep building out these huge data centers. You've actually got to consolidate the data centers into a smaller footprint, you know, crushing the data, and then, you know, you know, reducing the power consumption so it becomes more sustainable and greener. Really interesting uh, points uh, observed around the cost effectiveness of the matter. Um, also coming to the energy consumption, like you were just mentioning also, but uh, data center sector currently accounts for nearly 1% of the world's energy consumption. Um, how, how do you think, think the companies can uh, uh, deal with this in a better way, uh, what are the ways the companies could use to deal with the energy consumption side of the issue better? Uh, and how can the storage data storage sector help uh, countries like India to uh, reach a zero uh, carbon footprint uh, uh, goal by say, 2020, uh, 2070, like the goal is. Right. So, you know, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, the data centers across, uh, you know, the world produce 1% of all carbon emissions. So it is a significant challenge for all governments, or all countries and, and all companies. Um, and according, according to the uh, World Economic Forum, 4% of the global emissions are actually produced by digitization. So you can see how in India, with this massive drive for digitization, with the increase in you know, data, with the increase in mobile connectivity, that, that is a problem. So really it's a, around design principles. You know, how are companies designing their equipment and their technology to be more sustainable? And in our example, we've done that right from the get-go. Um, we've designed systems that allow our, our technology to draw less power, uh, draw less, um, you know, don't need cooling, um, you know, they are more sustainable. The actual element of e-waste is huge across the world. And we've designed our systems so they can actually be reused multiple times. So the amount that goes to landfill is significantly reduced. So I think I saw a stat within Pure that um, around about only, you know, one and a half percent of all of our you know, equipment actually goes to landfill, which is tiny in comparison to the industry. So it's really around the design principles and ensuring you start um, you know, thinking more sustainably right from the start rather than, you know, laterally trying to resolve it. You know, storage as a service is estimated to become a more than $100 billion industry globally by uh, 2026. Um, so do you think that storage as a service is going to be the main model of storage uh, in the future? 
Well, it's interesting. As you see, um, you know, the economies of the world change. You see the, um, the willingness to take on something like storage as a service become more prevalent in a more constrained environment. So, you know, inflation, um, you know, foreign exchange uh, increases and declines have actually meant that some of the, the requirements that companies have have changed. But let's look at the storage of service market. So in 2020, the storage of service market was something like 17.3 billion. Um, and, you know, by 2027, we're seeing growth of, you know, be between 49 and 50 billion additionally in storage of service. And there's good reason for that. Because basically, it, it takes away the requirement for a company, let's say a finance house, to start managing storage. Storage is not their core skill. Banking is their core skill. But it's important we kind of define what storage of service is. Um, and when these companies buy it, really what they're buying is they're buying capacity, and they're buying performance, and they're buying a service level agreement sat underneath that, which is provided by whatever supplier you know, is out there. Um, and that's exactly what we do. We, we provide exactly that model. Now, there are other models that are out there that are, that are fundamentally not storage as a service. They're really, you know, a different, so they, they, the company might buy as they have done historically, refresh it every five years, but it's all underpinned by a lease. So, which is basically, you know, a different way of buying it, but putting a lease underneath it. It's really important the market recognizes that, uh, you know, the accountability and responsibility should sit with the supplier because that's, you know, for example, our skill whilst allowing companies to do their core skill, which might be banking, telco, retail. So that, that's really, it's the definition of it, but it's a huge market, it's growing very rapidly. On that note, it's time to go into a break. When we return, we will discuss more on Pure Storage's next generation technology for data storage and its innovation strategies. CNBC TV 18 and Pure Storage present The Data Point. Accelerate businesses with AI and cloud. CNBC TV 18 and Pure Storage present The Data Point. Accelerate businesses with AI and cloud. Welcome back to CNBC TV 18 and Pure Storage present The Data Point. Accelerate businesses with AI and cloud. We have James Petter with us, who is the Vice President and General Manager International at Pure Storage. So, uh, James, like we were discussing, now I would like to move on to, on the cybersecurity side of things, we are already seeing connected smart cities, AI, IoT becoming the future of technology both from an industrial perspective as well as the personal side of things. So now this also brings in a concern around cyber security and data security. Mm. Uh, so what do you think the organizations can do better to protect themselves from this plethora of cyber security risks that's, uh, that's coming up? So, so clearly, you know, um, cyber security is a huge topic. And obviously right now we've seen uh, a lot of uh, ransomware attacks going on and companies are having to deal with a lot more. And given, the again, the volume of data, that means that there are more opportunities for these hackers to be able to get in. So um, it's really important that there there, there two things are, are done. So firstly, that companies are able to guarantee the integrity of their data. We call that immutable snapshots. So taking a snapshot of your data, uh, which then guarantees the integrity of it at that time. And the second thing is really that companies are able to back up and restore their data. So let's take, for example, you know, someone is hacked. Um, and they actually want to be able to get back and running, up and running as quick as they can. And certainly within the technology industry, getting a rapidly restored has been the challenge because the, the technology just hasn't been there. So when you had tape or when you had disk, it took a lot longer. But with the new media, Flash, which is generally speaking the, the pre preeminent media in the market, um, that has meant that you're able to restore a lot quicker once, once you have been hacked. So, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a little bit about risk mitigation, but ultimately it's about being prepared should the worst happen. Right, and uh, at Pure Storage, you have sort of been on the helm of creating the next generation technologies. So what's the driving force for bringing in these, these innovations at Pure Storage? So, so at Pure, we do really two things. 
We, uh, you know, we address our customers' demands, and we also anticipate what they're going to be, uh, you know, doing in the future. So we spend a lot of money and have done on research and development because, at the end of the day, whatever industry we want to go into, we want to disrupt it. So the first thing we did was disrupt the, you know, the way that people bought storage. So, you know, traditionally people would buy storage and they'd run it for five years, then they'd refresh it. We changed that completely with something we call evergreen, meaning that you can buy your technology and then 15, 20 years later, you can have exactly the same technology, but all the parts you have changed. And what that enables you to do is really upgrade your technology um, with no downtime, no risk, um, and, but you can keep the data in place. So it, it actually means you can retain the integrity of the data, but on the same technology. We're also moving into the areas of disrupting operations. So we're driving automation into how data is managed. And that really means you set a policy around where you want your data to be placed, and then it automatically gets placed. And then finally, we're now disrupting the application layer where we're helping companies to, uh, you know, place and spread their, their data through microservices, a little bit of a technical term, um, and uh, that allows them to have more redundancy with their applications because applications are now being developed in the cloud, so we need to accommodate that. So exciting time, we are the disruptor, and hopefully we will continue to do that. Can you share some of the innovations and use cases you have developed for uh, your clients in India? So. Um, I'll reference one and then I'll reference another one outside sure, of India. Sure. So Euronet, a uh, big financial services company, um, they were having problems in terms of trying to, you know, transactional data uh, and trying to, uh, you know, refresh that data on a regular basis. And basically they engaged with us and the benefits they got out of it were that they were able to reduce their data center footprint to my point where you're able to crush that data. They were able to double the transaction volume because of the speed the, you know, through, through flash media. Um, and ultimately, the cost profile that they enjoyed is far more beneficial to them because they were able to strip out costs. So, you know, those are fairly typical use cases that we see. Right. The other good example is really Mercedes Formula One. We work very closely with them. Um, and we do something called computational fluid dynamics. That's basically assessing the airflow over a car through lots of tiny sensors on the car that then you know, assess whether the car is going as fast as it can do. And ultimately that means that you can make choices better and quicker in the middle of a race and change the car so you have an advantage. We have a, an advert actually called, uh, it's a, it basically says that you know, it sounds like cheating, but it's not. It's actually using data effectively and at speed. So a couple of examples, hopefully that gives you an idea of what we yeah. do. How big is the India opportunity for pure storage at the moment? And could you share the key business focus area that's going to be for pure storage in India over say the next two to three years? So, um, I mean, clearly you are at a, an inflection point in India where, as I said right at the beginning, you know, a billion people over 29, under 29, sorry, um, mobile data usage, you know, at, an, at a huge rate, bigger than US and China combined. So the demand is there. Um, it's then how do you then use that data effectively? You manage it, you store it, you correlate it, you analyze it to then get real advantage for the country. Um, you know, the startup you know, scene here is, is huge as well. I, again, I saw stats that you are you know, either one or number two in the number of startups that are being created in India. So it's really down to how companies like Pure and others can help you know, the India you know, commercial business uh, develop and use data more effectively, but also build out, help the startups to build out so they can see the value of data, how you analyze it and use it to best advantage and ultimately to create value for India and for their company. So really exciting time. We're really excited about being here in India. We see it as an enormous opportunity. So we're, and we're looking forward to continuing this conversation, hopefully. We are looking forward to what Pure Storage has next to do in India and what exciting things are going to come forward. So thank you so much, James, for sharing those valuable insights. And with that, we have come to the end of the show. Hope you found the discussion informative. Stay tuned for more news and updates on CNBC TV 18. 
CNBC TV 18 and Pure Storage present The Data Point. Accelerate businesses with AI and cloud. Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable.